so anyway, uh, we're, we're, before I do that, we'll just, I wanted to just give some general thoughts about HF antennas. It's my, th this is my uh, tower and stepper, and you can sort of see the four square in the background. But um, my, my perception is that there are either a lot of new hams or hams that are not into HF or are concerned or are in, uh, intimidated by antennas or don't have the room or worry about the money and so on. So I want to talk about antennas in, in general. And uh, uh, kind of my first comment is uh, you can't have too many. Uh, for those of us who've been around as long as I have in this since 57 with uh, ham radio, just, um, there's lots of reasons for that. Well, propagation changes. So if you have a horizontal antenna, it might work one, one day really well and, and not another, but the vertical really does work well that particular day. Or you're in a rad shoe in the center of guys that are in four different directions. And a horizontal antenna probably isn't going to work really well for you for some of them. It'll work good for some and not for others. A vertical might be nice to have. And it's also good to have antennas that cover the same, different antennas cover the same band just so you can check them out in case something breaks. You know, why doesn't it work today? Well, I don't know. Try the other one and see if it works. And so anyway, uh, redundancy is a good thing uh, for just getting out, talking to people, and for testing reasons. Now, I have, I'm not going to read all this, but uh, so you can see I have a lot of redundancy. I mean, I've got 6 or 20 meters on the, the, the stepper on the tower. Um, uh, the Wyndham, I have a 265 foot Wyndham, great antenna. I'll talk about that again here in a little bit. Uh, 10 to 160 meters, uh, need a tuner to work it, but it, uh, it's a pretty darn good antenna and gets out great. Uh, have a Hustler ground mounted with some radials. I put up the 40 meter four square a couple years ago because I wanted to do DX on 40 with gain. I want to do another tower and another beam. Uh, great antenna. Uh, Talked to Papua New Guinea this morning on sideband five and nine. I mean, you know, works good. Uh, 80 meter inverted V, I have it on the tower, cut for the low end, the CW end of 80 meters, so I don't have to tune up a, uh, another antenna. It's already tuned. And uh, it's high. Then I have the uh, uh, 8160 coax inverted L that we're going to talk about here in a minute with elevated radials. We'll talk a lot about that. Uh, and uh, I also have, I don't have a beverage, I have the poor man's beverage, as I call it, the K9AY loop. And uh, it's two triangles, 180 out of phase, adjustable four different directions. Doesn't give you gain, but it nulls the noise in, all, in the directions you're not looking. And I use it either solo on the low bands, or I use it in diversity receive on my K3, meaning I have two receivers, and I could put it on one receiver, and the transmit antenna on the other and listen in stereo to two different antennas, one in each ear. So you get the fading in and out uh, for the two different polarized antennas, perhaps, and uh, it fills in the blanks. Pretty slick. Um, so, but for, for a new guy or a guy with limited space, kind of my, my uh, go to priorities would be put up a window. If you can't do a 265-footer, do a 130-footer, the half of that, uh, and, and uh, an elevated vertical. So instead of like the, like the Hustler, by the way, I happen to have a new one in the box for sale, if anybody's interested, but put it up on the house or on the garage. You only need like four to six radials, and you'll get as good or better than the ground mounted with 30 to 40 radials. Because, in fact, the book always recommends, if you're going to do a vertical, put it up. And then you can do elevated radials. Now you've got to figure out how to mow the grass you know, underneath the radials. And I deal with that in my uh, inverted uh, L. So, so anyway, that's a couple of thoughts in general. Any, any questions on, on that before I get into the? How high up is your 265 foot window? It's uh, well, it varies depending on where you are on the antenna, but it's, you know somewhere between 60 and 40, depending on what part of the, the antenna you're on. It's not high enough. That's why I did the other antenna. Do you have the center support so oh yeah. Collects yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, you have to, sir. How would you compare? A, just curious because I looked at the Wyndham 
Mm -hmm. uh, and with you know coax fed and the whole bit, and I ended up just going with a, a center fed fan dipole with 450 ladder line right into my my manual tuner because I have a tuner that handles balance no problem. Sure. And I've had, geez, I got 29 countries worked out of Alaska with that wire and only. Well, what feet. I mean, what what bands do you I use worked, it on? Uh, I've got QSOs from uh, it's 40, 20, 17. How long is your your wind? Uh, I mean, what have you got the antenna I, cut for? I'm, all of this. Geez, let, me, let me try to remember. We're probably around, I don't know, 60, 60 some foot. On the okay, but 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 you you're you're using a compromised antenna number one because you got the the open wire feeder. Not nothing wrong with that. Uh, and you loss, and you're using the when you're using the tuner. So you're you're that's where your loss is. In the My tuner. score is pretty good even without the tuner. I only no, use but the, the tuner. tuner is what we're, we should talk to him. The tuner is heating up. Yeah, I mean your your loss is in your tuner. Right. If you have a fan dipole, you shouldn't need a tuner. I, I only use I, what right. I was going to say is I only I only have the <coughs> tuner on for 17 meter. Yeah. I don't have to. My score is beautiful. Well, all the other bands. I mean, I mean, if you're if you're loving it and it works, use it. You know, I mean, that yeah, that's the secret. One thing I've always struggled with. I don't want to take up the whole time, but I've always struggled with uh, coax versus ladder line going to a center fed dipole. Because that just seems like one advantage. I don't want to steal Alan's thunder. Is when I first moved here, I put up an off center fed dipole with a vertical radiating element. Well, that's what you have. And it worked out like a band that I was amazed. Well, that's what a Wyndham is. I mean, right, the, right. that vertical piece is part of the, is a radiator. Yeah, but so a lot of people put up off center fed dipoles and they don't bother with the. Vertical. No, then then you don't have the vertical part, right? Right. Okay. So. Sorry. Go ahead. Was there something, another question? Do you have one of that? Okay. Uh, well, all right. Well, let's go. Let's talk about the um, uh, inverted L coax. I'm going to have some pictures, so you don't have to. You don't have to memorize this stuff. Uh, you know, I, I I had the one, I had the long Wyndham, and it was working okay. Uh, but I don't have it up high enough that I that you know to, to be optimal for DX. And I'm a DX guy, so I wanted to get the XCC. So I said, well, I'm going to try this thing. Uh, and uh, sure enough, March 2012 QST uh, comes out. Use some of my props here, and uh, uh, Mark. Who was here when I pitched this, or Scott rather, K4 VWK, did a resonant 80160 elevated radial coax inverted L. And I said, shoot, that sounds like a piece of cake. I can do that. Uh, and I got the, I got the space. Uh, and what I liked about it was you didn't need a MAMU capacitor, loading capacitor at the base, a vacuum variable or something like that, which a lot of these antennas need, especially if you're going to use power. And I use power. I had the space, and I said, "Well, let's give it a let's give it a try. See what happens." So this is what it looks like. This is the the diagram. So uh, it works 80 and 160, and it depends on where you feed it. Okay. So if you feed it above the line isolator, it's for 80. If you feed it below the line isolator, it's for 160. We'll talk about the line. the line isolator. You could MFJ cells. I mean, just basically a one to one. Uh, ballon that isolates your antenna from your feed line, okay? So you don't you don't get coupling. Um, and there's a ground rod with the elevated radials, and I'll show you some pictures. 65 foot here, uh, and that's about uh, another 65 foot of wire uh, connected to the center of the coax. The coax is open up here, meaning the shield doesn't connect anything. So here's your, here's your capacitor, right here. That's your loading capacitor. Uh, and uh, and this is number 14 wire, okay? Ground rod, and I'll show you how I, what the mechanics are of that stuff. Um, these were the lengths, uh, Scotts and mine, roughly. Uh, and uh, you need a 65 foot run. I wasn't quite there. You'll see. I get a. I, I call it my drip loop uh, because I didn't quite get it up all the way. But then didn't matter a whole lot. And on the on the 65 or 70 foot piece here. Then you have some tuning stubs, depending on to add or subtract, depending on where you want to be in the band. Okay, and uh, this actually, when I run it down, it runs down to the to a tree about up here. So it runs at an angle, but it doesn't matter. It works just fine. Um, but that's change the loading. There's my drip loop. Uh, here's the line isolator. You've seen these things. Windhams all have them. Um, 
and this is just the coax piece that goes up up to the tree, and uh, feed line goes off to the to the switch, and broad, pretty broad banded. Um, I mean, I I worked the low end of 160 uh, from the low end to about 1850 or so, and uh, uh, it, it's you know it's good SWR without even any of the tuning stubs uh, for me, and uh, and I have my. Uh, 80 meters set for the uh, DX part of the phone band, which is 3790 to 3800. So, you know, it's pretty broad around that. I mean, uh, what device did you use to get those graphs? Uh, these, I, I just, I, I imported these from, from the author. Is that what you're asking oh, okay. me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't actually do this. I mean, I, I, he did it all. He, he, he modeled it in Enzec. Okay. Yeah. So this is all Enzec modeling, and he. <laughs> He just allowed me to use the <laughs> use the products. Good question, though. Uh, I have a, a back couple on that later. Um, so the mechanics of uh, so how do you make that connection? Uh, I used a, a electric you know, a four four plug electric box cover. And I'll show you a picture of it in a minute to connect the the seat the coax. Uh, and then connect up uh, around a, a stainless steel uh, nut and bolt to the wire at the top, and then just some alligator clips on those jumpers uh, at the, uh, uh, al along the tuning stubs. I since replaced them because they rust. OK. Could you, could you do away with the alligator clips, perhaps, and just have a fixed length? Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that's what I did. In other words, this was just to tinker with it as you were setting it up. You tune it, or if you, if you decide you want to uh, you know, operate different parts of the band, so then you you know then you can you can do that disconnect them and connect them as need be because it's easy to get get to them if you put put that the end of the wire on a pulley you just let it rip and get to it pretty quick. Okay, so this is your uh, line isolator. You can see I put a a copper piece of copper strip, three inch copper strip on the bottom, drilled a hole so it would fit over the coax connector, and I could ground the shield. So this is the below below the uh, isolator connection. And of course, uh, the line isolator comes with a, the standard ground strap connection for the top. So right now, it's hooked up for 80 meters. And it goes off to the ground rod at the base here. And I've got, I think here, it's hard to see, I think six or seven 100 foot radials. It's just uh, uh, electric fence wire, 100 foot hunks. And they go up from this wire. This is the lowest part of the radials. So I, I have them going up to about 10 or 12 feet off the ground. So I could sort of get underneath with the lawnmower uh, without doing that to myself. And, uh, uh, and uh, they break occasionally. The deer run into them, but it's just like your fence wire. So it's pretty cheap to fix. Here's my high tech center connection <coughs> electric box cover. A couple of copper. This is a, a soaker hose piece just to hold the coax and bolt it in uh, with a stainless steel bolt. And then I waterproofed it. And uh, this is the wire that goes off with the tuning stubs. You can see the ground connection here a little bit better uh, with a, a clamp to hold it. It's about three feet out of the ground at that point. And uh, here's the alligator clip uh, uh, example with the tuning stubs. And my high-tech end insulators, which is just a one-inch slice of conduit, one-inch conduit <laughs> with the rope on one end and the, the radial piece on the other end just to hold it. And uh, it works fine, lasts a long time, and great, great price. Um, so how does it play? Well, it plays pretty well. I mean, uh, uh, I got the XCC, which is what I ex hoped to do on 160. And uh, it was, uh, all, was painless. I mean, this antenna, I'll show you a picture, very low angular radiation. So it works DX really well. Um, and those elevated radials, again, I'm only using six or seven. Um, so you know, that's 600 feet versus my four square with 6,000 feet of uh, ground radial. Is the radial just right? But you say this fence wire is a copper? No, just the steel, the alum aluminum or steel, whatever they sell that okay. stuff yeah. on, you know, at the at southern states or lows. Uh, you know, 80 meters, 
uh, rag chewing great uh, and and, and uh, DX excellent. Uh, you know, and takes and it takes the power, no problem. It's it's resonant. You know, 1.3 to one or less uh, where I operate, so I can I can hit it with 1500 watts and there's no no hiccups. Um, and uh, anyway, it it, uh, it did what I wanted to do, and I'm still using it, and I have it rigged for 80 right now. So, uh, you know, bottom line is it's a piece of cake to construct. You just saw the pieces I used. The only unique piece in that whole thing is the line isolator, which, which you know, I'd recommend you buy from DX Engineering or MFJ or somebody. <clears throat> but the rest of it now, is Lowe's. <laughs> the author said, though, that he had a little better consistency that when he used the one by Radio Works, if I don't look, I two of them. Well, Radio Works is, is who sells the Wyndham, but Radio Works has sort of been in a bit in business right. and out of business and back in business, and I'm not I sure guess which. I but didn't say articulately. If you use another brand line isolator, you said you might have to play around with the measurements to duplicate his results. Uh, I, 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 this is so insensitive. To that. I, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. That, I mean, remember the line isolator is just a line isolator. It, it, you know, it's it, it's it's not a major part of the circuit. If I can ask, so to change bands, all you have to do is move the copper from the bottom to the top. The, the ground connection right. above and and whatever your your lineup is on the tuning stubs on the wire. I mean, I have mine on a pulley, so you know, I leave the leave it up in the the top is up, but the bottom comes down at an angle to a pulley where I can reach it. Right. So I just go out there, you know, f uh, slip the knot and go out there and move it. To where I need to move it sure. and back up and it's bingo. It's pretty, looks fairly expensive too. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I could just say, I mean, I, all this stuff you could buy at Lowe's in Southern States. You, you know, there's no other than the line isolator, and that's, I think they're about sixty bucks, yeah. something like that. So, you, when you change bands, is that also an alligator clip or something? No, uh, no. Actually, I mean, on the ground, yes. Uh, you could do that, but I, I actually use a stainless steel bolt. It only takes a minute to. To move it, yeah. I, I mean, that's I want that. Support? Did you do anything for corrosion protection? Or yeah, no. I I used uh, you know uh, regular waterproofing stuff. Uh, well, no, no. I mean the liquid. Yeah, silicone rubber and all that. Yeah, you got you got to waterproof it. Otherwise, you're you'll get water in the coax. Yeah. So uh, so there you go. Plays well. Like I said, you know, four squares got. Uh, 36, 32 foot radials under each of the four radials, uh, four radiators, and this only has uh, 600 feet. So, you know, that's that's pretty cool. Um, and uh, manual band changing is, you know, I, I'm not unless you're shifting bands, it, it, it's it's not an issue. And at this time of year, for example, 160 is basically worthless because of noise. So I have it set up on on 80 in the phone band, and. Uh, you know, I check in the morning. The guys are in; they're in. So, so that's. Uh, so I'm glad I built it. I'll take any questions, and uh, you might have. And oh yeah, I did have. Uh, I told you I got some pictures for Larry. He was asking me that. So, uh, this was the uh, the radiation pattern. Okay, so you know it's low angle. I mean, it's this this uh, you know what this is the DX antenna. Although it works pretty well in in. Uh, Oops, uh, there's your, you asked about the modeling. It was an NZEC model. OK, sir. Um, is there any utility to, if you're putting up multiple antennas, having them at different angles as far as north-south orientation? Yeah, I mean, if they're, if they're the same polarization, that, you, you know, if they're horizontal, you, you'd like, to, you'd probably do that. I mean, you know, one of the old tricks is, you know, 40 and 80 meters, right? You do inverted Vs on the same coax, on the same, same ballon, 90 degrees out, you know, right? Because they, they, don't, they don't see each other that way. And so you can feed two antennas if you can hang it you know, off the same spot. Sir? I, th I think I talked to you about this when you first built it, but if you, if you cut this in half for 80 and 40, would you expect the same low angle radiation? Um, well, an 80, yeah, I mean, because it's the same antenna, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, but um, I, I don't know about 40. I haven't tried it in 40. I don't know. Don't know. It'd be an interesting experiment. Yeah. 
Yeah. Sir. As someone who rents in the diagonal of my property in total, it's approximately a quarter of that of uh, what you would need for a 80 meter dipole. Yeah. Um, do you have any suggestions for smaller, just I mean, vertical. physical, and, and even verticals are too big with the radials needed, um, especially with a, a shared yard area. You know, just me, I could, you know, close on myself all day. But. Well, I mean, it, uh, I, I'd have to look at it, but I mean, what, what bands do you want to operate? You know, the well, higher frequencies, they're smaller antennas. Yeah, yeah, I have, I have a, a, a compromise that gets me down to 40, uh, which is nice. Uh, but then anything um, below, just to get any money, it would be um, I thought maybe a mag loop, but that's getting into the, the variable capacitor needed for a mag loop 180 is just, that's, where am I going to find that? Yeah, I, I, well, I mean, if you're that small, I wouldn't worry about 80. I'd just do, do something with uh, a, a, an elevated vertical put a vertical up with some, yeah. you know, if you don't get the radials to, to, you know, 35 feet quarter wave radials for 40 meters, so what? Yeah. You, you, go, you go what you can do and, it'll, and see how it works. Uh, generally speaking, uh, you can bend radials around corners. They don't have to run straight. You can make them short, you long. Use the dipole elements around corners. So yeah, yeah short, inverted V. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of options, you know. I mean, the, the, the real thing is give it a shot. Try it. See what happens. You know, you might be surprised. Yeah. I had, when I talked to you about this, I, I was using a vertical on a postage stamp lot in Belmont. And I put radials down that were short as 15 feet. I bet my longest was 50. Yeah. And I just go out in the backyard every day when I came home from work and lay down three or four more and ended up with close to 100. <laughs> well, I'm going to a vertical that you can buy from MFJ and the tuner and everything. That thing worked great. Really and yeah. Really well on 40 points. I mean, it's kind of an old old axiom on on, on radials. You know, uh, uh, sh shorter and more is 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 good or better than longer right. and fewer. Yeah, and I, I mean, literally, some of them were 12, 15 feet was all I could do because of the property line. Sir, see here we're also blessed with lots of rain and decent soil conductivity, and that helps too. Round mountain. Yeah, I love that clay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. Yeah, Alan, have you, have you tried loading the tower? Uh, no, because it's a crank, it's a motorized crank up. So you know you have the the you know the sections and the the connect you know the connections between sections are are problematic. Well, yeah. <laughs> climb your tower. Yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to block it every time I go up and change the antenna. Yeah. No. I said I was happy. To get, I was happy to get it recabled for a good price. So anyway, sir. I'm, I'm pretty sure you said this already, but does it cover CW as well as sideband the way you have it configured on uh, uh No, because uh, I mean it can, uh, but I have it. I have it. You know the the uh, uh, the jumpers set for uh, the the phone band. So, so but you, you use it on both. You would you would lower the section and jumper something in maybe with an alligator. No, you don't have to, you don't change the vertical section at all. No. No, no. You just change that horizontal right. section. You just add in add wire. So you lower that and clip it maybe. You just add yeah it. yeah add add wire till till you get where you want to be. Okay. Yeah yeah no, no it's a piece of cake. Top section fairly horizontal, or doesn't it droop down? Mine, no, mine is, uh, is is roughly a 45 degree angle. Did you strive for that, or that's just the way? No, because it's I, I did it because it's easy to work get to. Uh, but yeah, you can if you can you can certainly put it up and, and make it more horizontal. But the effect I know uh, Scott well, Scott did check that out. I mean that was in his article when he talked about it. Uh, not not a whole lot of difference. Not a whole lot of difference. So for your work, I, I think you said already, did you say your final, op, what's your final operating height at the end of the wire where the, where the lips are? Did you say it was like 10 feet or? No. Uh, well, I mean, my tie off is, is about, oh. is where I can reach it. But the, you know, the, the actual end of the wire is up about uh, 20, 25 feet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I misunderstood. Yeah, well, it's the top so of 65 going, yeah, and kind of 65, say, yeah. So you're going from 65 to like 25, give, 60, 25, give or take? Right. Gosh, I could do that. That's yeah. Okay. That's scooping. Yeah. You got the broadside end of the Europe? There is no broadside. This is a vertical. Yeah. There's a bend in it, so that defines a plane. That well, plane yeah, but it, 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 it's, it's pretty omni. 
it's pretty omni, yeah. Yeah. Sir? So uh, I, I missed the part about the radials. How far are they above the ground? Uh, they, well, they start, you know, the, they start here. And they go up. And, but they go up. And I have them tied off, uh, you know, just on a step ladder. I tied them up to about 10 or 12 feet off the ground. Okay. Just, just to keep, primarily, just to keep them out of the, uh, you know, not knocking myself off the lawnmower. Go ahead. What's the area underneath your elevated radio? The, well, they're 100 feet, right? So that's like an acre. Oh, I don't know. I didn't. Uh, I haven't done the two pi r, uh, pi r squared, but <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there I have. I have them going off pretty much, uh, you know, 100 feet off into the forest and various places. Uh, yeah, pretty close. I mean, that, the Foursquare, for example, uh, that I have, I mean, Foursquare looks really simple when you look at the Foursquare because it's got four quarter wave verticals a quarter wave apart on each side, right? Piece of cake, I can do that, right? What's a quarter wave on 40 meters? Okay, so, uh, you know, about 33 feet, 34 feet, right? Except that's only half the antenna. The other half is the ground plane. Mm -hmm. And that's where you have, I have, 36, 32-foot radials under each of those four. So you end up with a 100-foot square, right? Oh. Two is your footprint. Um, that was far more work to construct than you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's uh, manual labor, concrete, uh, shovel, digging trenches, you know, for the, for the phasing lines and all that stuff. And, and just on your hands and knees doing radials. So, but, but works like it. You know, it works great. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than a tower and a beam. Uh, that's for sure. No yes, sir. Why you couldn't raise that feed point up quite a ways if you had the space and time? Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. I I just did because I had you know that was a that was a handy tree and it was in the right spot and I could run the coax you know reasonably easily and uh, and switch it out with the another antenna on the tower. So. Uh, all right, well, thanks. Uh, that was fun.